Hello everyone. For our first lesson of the year, we're going to be learning lesson 1.1a, in which we're going to learn to convert any fraction into a decimal form. So that's our goal for today. That's the title for our lesson. That's what we're going to be doing. And we're starting off pretty easy for this year uh, with this lesson. Um, we will get more difficult as, as the lessons progress, but we want to kind of ease our way into things this year. So we're starting off with a lesson that really you guys should already be familiar with and that you should already know how to do. So when we have any fraction, we know that the top number is called the numerator and the bottom number is called the denominator. You'll have to pardon my handwriting. I need to, I need to work on that a little bit on the iPad, but we're, we're going to get it figured out. And so in order to take a fraction where we have numerator over denominator and actually convert that into a decimal, all we're going to have to do is divide. And so when we divide the, when we divide the numerator and denominator, we put the denominator out in front of the division bar symbol, and we put the numerator underneath. So if we take a look at our first example, we start off with 5 over 8 as our first fraction that we're going to look at. And so as we see in green and orange, we're going to take the denominator, which is 8, and put that out front. And the numerator, which is 5, put that underneath. Now we're going to need some a decimal place after the 5, then we're going to include some zeros, just because we know that this is going to be a decimal, so we're going to make space for that now. So first thing we ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 5? And we know that the answer to that is 0, so we can go ahead and put a 0 above the 5 with a decimal underneath. Make sure that our decimals, our decimals always say aligned correctly. Now we ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 50? And we know that 8 goes into 50 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. So I bring down my 48 here. Now we subtract. 50 minus 48 gives us a 2. And so now we're going to want to bring down this 0. Oops. So working on the technology a little bit. Bring down the 0. And so now we ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 20? And we know that it goes into 20 two times. 2 times 8 is 16. 20 minus 16 will give us 4. So now I'm going to go back up to the top, add another 0 in. I'm going to bring that 0 down. And so the last thing we do, ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 40? And it goes in exactly 5 times. 5 times 8 gives us 40, and so we end up with 0. And there's two ways we know that we can go ahead and stop actually doing our division problem. Those are when we subtract and we end up with 0, or if we keep getting the same answer over and over again and we end up with a repeating decimal. So those are the two ways in which we can know that we're done with our division. So in this problem we see that 5 over 8 is equal to 0 0.625. Those two numbers are equal to each other, they're equivalent, they're just written in different forms. One is a fraction and one is a decimal. So we get 5 over 8 is equal to 0 0.625. Now let's say that we accidentally flip that around. And so for our next example we're going to take 8 divided by 5. So in your bell work if you accidentally flipped it around and you took 8 divided by 5, Here's what might have happened with that. So again, we want to take our denominator, put that out front, with our numerator underneath. Numerator starts with NU, underneath starts with UN, so that's kind of what I do. That's a mnemonic that I use to help me remember that the numerator needs to go underneath. So 8 divided by 5, I'm sorry, yeah, 8 divided by 5 has the 5 out in front, the 8 underneath, and I'm going to put just one decimal underneath with the zero. We know that five goes into eight one time. One times five is five. So I'm gonna subtract. Eight minus five gives me three. Then I bring down the zero. Put a decimal after the one. Five goes into 30 six times. Six times five is 30. And we end up with zero. That tells us that we are done. So in this problem, we see that 8 over 5 
8 over 5 is equal to 1.6. Again, those two numbers are equal to each other. They are the same exact value. They are just written in different forms. All right, I've got one more example that I want to take a look at with you guys, and that is for a mixed number. We have 2 and 4 ninths. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can do this problem. One way is to realize that if our number starts off with 2 and 4 ninths, then our answer must be 2 point something. And we don't know what that something is yet, but we will figure it out. So one way that we could go about doing this problem is to ignore the 2 and just do 4 divided by 9. Okay, And we can get our answer that way. Or the way that I want you to do it, because a lot of times students will forget to put that 2 in the front. The way that I want you to go ahead and actually do this problem is I want you to take 2 and 4 ninths and convert it to a mixed or an improper fraction. So we have 2 and 4 ninths, and we want to rewrite that as an improper fraction. Now, if you remember back to when you were younger, probably fifth grade or so, in order to take a mixed number and rewrite it as an improper fraction, we're going to take and multiply 9 times 2 to get 18, then 18 plus 4 gives us 22. So 2 and 4 ninths is equal to 22 over 9. Those are the exact same thing. They mean the same thing. They're just written in different forms. So 2 and 4 ninths and 22 over 9, those are the same thing. So now we can go ahead, we put our numerator underneath and our denominator out front. And we ask ourselves, how many times does 9 go into 22? Well, we should know from above that if our original problem was 2 and 4 ninths, then 9 has to go into 22 two times. 2 times 9 is 18. We subtract, and we get 4, which is what we should get based on our numerator that we had here. Okay, That's, That should always work. This number here and this number here should always be the same when you're working with a improper fraction and a mixed number. So now we put a decimal after the 2. Let's put that 0 in the wrong place. And I'm going to bring this 0 down. 9 goes into 40. 9 goes into 44 times. 4 times 9 is 36. And we end up with 4 again. Well, if we got a 4 here, and we get a 4 here as well, we know that this is going to keep repeating. And it just so happens that it repeats with 4 up here. Now, that is not going to always happen, where this number here and this number here are going to be the same. In this problem, it happened to work out that way. That is not always going to be the case. So, instead of just writing a whole bunch of 4s behind that, behind that 2, instead of what we're going to do is we're going to use the repeater bar. So, instead of 2.44444, so on forever, we're going to say 2.4. Let me try again. 2.4 with a repeater bar over the 4. That tells us that the 4 repeats and then it goes on forever. Okay? So, 2.4 repeating is our answer. So, up here, we know that 2 and 4 ninths is equal to 2.4 repeating. Okay? And that's also equal to 22 over 9. All three of those mean the exact same thing. They will all, they're all have the same value. They're all just written in different forms. All right, make sure that you guys have taken good notes, that you've written down everything that I said and did in this video. And when we come back to school on Tuesday, we'll take some time to answer any questions that you may have. Make sure that you write down on your, on your notes any questions that you might have, and I will, take, uh, I will take a look at your notes to make sure that you have these three examples along with the little bit of notes that I had on the first page. All right, hope you guys have a good weekend.